Good morning and welcome. We are grateful to gather today, a few of us in the sanctuary, some outdoors at UUS, and many of us online this morning as the Unitarian Universalist Society for inspiration, music, learning, and conversation. I'm Peggy Garrigus, Director of Congregational Life and your Zoom host for this morning. If you're visiting our service today, welcome. We hope you find the service meaningful. As Unitarian Universalists, we don't all believe the same things, but we claim six sources of our living tradition. One of those sources is spiritual teachings of earth-centered traditions, which celebrate the sacred cycle of life and instruct us to live in harmony with the rhythms of nature. We celebrate our connections with the natural element of water this morning as we celebrate our water communion service. This morning, our minister, Reverend Diana Smith, will be leading the service along with several others. And we have several hospitality team members in person welcoming those who have gathered outdoors at our UUS building. And now over to Reverend Diana for our call to gather. Good morning. I'm Reverend Diana Smith, the minister of the Unitarian Universalist Society, and it is wonderful to be with you all this morning. In these times of change, it is so important to be together, to come together as a spiritual community, to gain the sustenance that we each and all need and to help nourish each other. As members of a covenantal faith that expresses our core value of love through how we agree to be together and support each other, it is good to come together and to affirm that even when we cannot all be together, gathered in body, when we find new ways of being together, this congregation remains strong and connected. And that that's not an even though, that's a because. That's a because we find new ways of being together. We remain strong and connected and we affirm our values of love. And it is good to be together to affirm that we have faith and hope in this congregation, in each other, and in the ways that we continue to grow together during these challenging times of change. And to affirm that wherever any of us is on our life's journey, whether we come to worship with joy in our hearts, weighted with burdens in need of rest or searching for people to engage in the struggle with us, we are glad, and this community is glad, that we are here. Today, as we celebrate our water communion and gathering, as we take time to notice how our lives are intermingled and interconnected, let us begin with this video about the strength of water and the strength of us from Jamila Bachelor and Reverend Molly Hush Gordon. strength of water takes on many forms, just as each of us has a unique and necessary strength that we bring to our community and the work of love. Take a moment now to drop down into the deep wellspring of your own spirit and bathe yourself in the strength that is the groundwater of your person. Are you a roaring fall wearing rock away with sheer force of will? Are you a small sliver of water in a crevice, breaking it open slowly and steadily? Are you buoyant, like a great salt lake, practiced at holding yourself or others aloft? Are you tenacious like the mountain stream, finding your way down and around and through every obstacle you face? Are you still 
and calm like the pond at daybreak, radiant peace found by your shores. Are you in touch with hidden depths? pulling from a vast well deep within. Do you soothe like the steam rising from a cup of tea? Do you dissolve away stubborn muck like dishwater? Do you soften and smooth the edges like a creeping fog? Do you clear away distraction like a cleansing rain? Do you roll with the ebb and flow with the rhythm of the ocean waves? Settle your mind upon the strength, the power that is yours. Draw that strength into your heart, draw it up into your soul, and there find peace. As we endure difficult times together, we need each of our power, each of our resilience, each of our love to make us whole. Morning. Uh, we have a hymn, number 92, uh, Mysterious Presence, Source of All. You might be interested to know that this hymn was written uh, for a visitor day at a university by a Unitarian uh, minister. But uh, if you're here in this room, I'll ask you maybe to sing softly, or if you'd like to move about a little bit, that'd be good. If you're at home, feel free to sing as uh, loudly as you like.
I'm Margaret Kinsman, your worship associate on this glorious autumn day. Very happy to be here. As Unitarian Universalists, we light a flame within a chalice as a symbol of sanctuary and safety to unite us in our worship and to remind us of our ongoing search for the light of truth. Please join me at home and here in the responsive words. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the wonder and mystery of this great gift. So let us now kindle the flame of our religious, liberal religious heritage and renew our covenant of mutual love and care. Love is our doctrine, the quest for truth is our sacrament, and service is our prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, and to serve those in need, this we promise, this we covenant with life and one another. Each week, when we light a candle for justice and healing, we hold space for our understanding of interdependence, that our liberation is bound up with every other person's liberation, and for our feelings of rage and heartbreak over the ongoing pandemics of illness and racism, the devastation of climate chaos, and the waves of trauma washing over our world. As the pandemic continues to take a terrible toll, on people, feeding on divisiveness and systems of oppression that have been allowed to fester, we light this candle to help us hold space together for processing what is happening in our lives and in our world. We light this candle that we may not be numbed to injustice, devastation, illness, and trauma, but rather find strength, courage, and love together to continue engaging with the struggles for liberation, justice, and healing. And so now let's hold us, let us hold 20 seconds of silence to listen to our hearts and our bodies, perhaps lift up prayers. And so now, as Maureen Patterson plays our centering music, I invite you to take this time to sink more deeply into the presence of each other. In this time, we invite you into a practice of beholding each other. If you're online participating in the service and you'd like, you can turn your cameras on and spend this time beholding each other's faces, each other's presence. If you're in the sanctuary or outside, please take this time to behold the reality of each other and this beautiful place where we're gathered. And please feel free to use the chat to let us know that your chalice is lit.
I am the rain, written and illustrated by John Patterson. Sometimes I am the rain cloud, and sometimes I'm the rain. Sometimes I'm a roadside rapid roaring down a drain. I can show you rainbows in mist or moaning dew. I can be a muddy flood or a pool of aqua blue. Once I was a waterfall, but now I'm just a wave. At high tide, I'm the breaking swell that daring surfers brave. In winter, I'm the icy flake that's melting on your nose. As skiers ski and skaters skate, I'm sleeping when it snows. When springtime comes, I melt away and run into a creek, waiting. I'm the ocean bay that searching rivers seek. Soon the summer sun is back and warms me with its rays. I rise in rumbling thunderheads like castles in the haze. In fall, I sink into a fog and blanket chilly fields with pumpkins touched by morning frost, the harvest season yields. You'll find me in the comet highs, circling the stars. I'm also carving canyons deep on Earth and Cousin Mars. Because of me, the land is green. I am why the sea is blue. All of life depends on me. I am even part of you. Soon, I'll be a cloud once more, and then I'll fall as rain. My circle takes me wide and far, but I'll come round again. We all come from water. Life began in the oceans. Babies are cradled in amniotic fluid, water before they're born. Our bodies are made mostly of water. Everything that lives needs water, from the smallest bugs to the plants that create the air we breathe and feed us all the way up to the largest whales. The water that we have today is the same water that we've had for thousands of years, and it connects us to the past, the future, and all of life in amazing ways. In fact, water is life. From the beginning, humans have built our homes and communities near water. We are drawn to water, and we are drawn together by water. Like water that moves through the water cycle, scattering into rain, streams, oceans, clouds, becoming parts of plants and animals, and cycling again to come back together in new ways. We humans, we are separate, and we come back together. And so each year, as congregations come back together in the fall after summers, where we've gone in separate directions, many Unitarian Universalist congregations participate in the ritual of water communion. We each pour water that is meaningful to us into a bowl. The water each person adds mingles with other water, reflecting how our lives intertwine, giving us deeper and richer, more fluid and more fun life. Now this year, we aren't coming back together in the same ways we did before the pandemic. Much has changed, 
And this includes the ways that we gather in order to protect everyone as COVID sweeps through our community. We're gathering in smaller numbers and in different spaces. Today, that includes some people in the sanctuary at UUS, some people outside at UUS, and many more at home. And after this online worship service, we'll be gathering outside at UUS with whoever wants to come to participate in interactive water communion activities with masks on. And yet, and still, even with these differences, we are celebrating water communion because we are coming back together in spirit as the rhythms of life change, as we move into the school year and the church year. And we are celebrating water communion because water holds many truths, including that of change and many hopes that are even more apparent to us today. And it holds much that we need to hear and to affirm today more than ever. Today, we'll celebrate our water communion from many locations, but as we do so, we know that we are connected by water, by air, by fire, by earth, and by spirit, and that we are participating in this ritual together. If you're participating in this service online and you have an empty bowl and a full glass of water, please move them in front of you now. If you're here in the sanctuary, we're going to be doing this with a bowl of water here in a moment. And if you're outside, we'll be doing this at 1045 after the service. So as we begin, I'll start our water communion with this empty glass, this cup that's empty of water. Many of you have a bowl that's empty. If you do, I invite you to pick it up. We start this way because even as we add water that is precious to us to our bowls, we are mindful of those who don't have enough water, those who don't have clean water, those who must travel miles in search of water. We're mindful of people who are enduring treacherous treks across arid lands, forced into ever more dangerous dry paths in their search for safety along this country's southern border. And we're mindful of those around this world who are facing water shortages and those who are suffering from floods and hurricanes and those who are suffering from political disasters all made worse by climate chaos. And so we begin our water communion with this empty glass and we pause to remember them and the wholeness of humanity. And then, in a moment, we'll pour water into our bowls. The members who are gathered here, all of you will be invited to come forward and pour water into our large bowl. And after this service, others can pour, come and pour water into this bowl during our interactive activities. As we pour water into this bowl, I invite you to also pour water into your bowl at home if you're there, holding this congregation in your heart as you pour. You'll also see photos of water that's important to you that you sent in. And as we do this ritual, may this water mingling in this bowl remind us that our beloved community is a place where we share the flow of our hearts and our lives with one another. May we share the fountains of our joys, the wells of our grief, the wonder of our growth and our strength. May we guide one another through rapids of transformation and storms that come upon us unexpectedly and rest together on ponds of stillness. So now, let us begin our water communion.
May all be blessed by this sharing. And now we come to a time where we will be commissioning our board of trustees for this year. In Unitarian Universalist congregations, all power and authority comes through the congregation and is bestowed upon leaders, ordained, elected, or appointed, to carry out services or ministries for the good of the whole. This is what we call congregational polity, if you've wondered about that term. It means that the power and authority comes from the congregation rather than being handed down from a higher or overarching authority. This is why Unitarian Universalist ministers are, are, are ordained by congregations rather than by bishops. This is also why when leaders begin serving in specific roles, we often have ceremonies of covenanting or commissioning. These are times when a congregation and the leaders acknowledge the significance, the theological as well as administrative significance of what is happening. Today, then, we're formally bestowing upon this congregation's chosen lay leaders the authority that they need to carry out the works that we have assigned to them. This commissioning service is an opportunity to give our blessing to the ministries these people will provide in the coming year and have already been providing and to affirm their sense of calling to the roles of service that they claim and to which you have elected them as leaders. It's also a moment when we acknowledge the covenant we are entering into together. Covenants form the basis of Unitarian Universalism. They're a way of saying to whom and for what we want to be accountable, how we want to be with one another, and often some of the fundamental principles for our actions. They can also tell us about what we aspire to be together and to be for one another. Our covenants and what we covenant for fundamentally define us as Unitarian Universalists. And they give us space to engage in our spiritual work that defines this as a faith community, as a congregation, as a church. These leaders need our blessing if they are to do what this congregation has asked them to do. They need our affirmation and our support, for they are very human and are experiencing the same stresses of the pandemic. Yet, they have entered into the ministry of leadership for all of our sakes. These, then, the people elected to the Board of Trustees at the Unitarian Universalist Society are appointed to fill an unexpected vacancy on the board caused by these particularly difficult times. So, as I call your name, please move to the front of the sanctuary, or if you're at home, I hope that Mike Pavlich and Paula Miller are out there and will turn their videos on. So when I call your name, please come and move to the front of the sanctuary and stand up here. Alan Swanson, Rochelle Honey Arsman, Joe Rasmussen, Mike Pavlich. Yeah, just kind of stand up here facing the camera out there so everybody can see you. <laughs> Um, okay, Mike Pavlich, John Raley, Julia Aldelhelm, Diana Henry, Hazel Seba, and Paula Miller, who is being appointed secretary to the board effective September 15th of this year. So yeah, come on, come on over here, yeah. <laughs> we want everybody to see all of you. Okay. So these then, these then are the people that you have called to serve. If you're participating online and using the speaker view mode right now, we encourage you to move to gallery view it, to see Mike and Paula too, or maybe they're being, no, don't do that, they're being spotlit or something. All right, I'm getting signals from people here. This is all a very complicated, interesting world that we're trying to figure out. <laughs> okay, so now, will the members of the congregation, if you're here, um, please, if anywhere you are, please join in the service of commissioning. If you're here, speak out loud. <laughs> if you're outside, you can speak out loud. If you're online, don't turn your, um, stay muted. Um, okay, saying the words of the commissioning. All right, so we the members of the, this congregation charge you to be guided in your work 
by our covenant and the principles we hold in common. We charge you to affirm the dignity and worth of all persons and to champion the rights of children, youth and adults, queer and straight, old and young, that this might be a free church open to all people. We charge you to cherish our spiritual diversity and to help us to live together so that we are strengthened rather than divided by our religious pluralism so that we might truly cherish the integrity of each individual and search for truth with reason as our guide. We charge you to honor our past without being bound by it, that we might be mindful of our past, yet draw upon modern knowledge as we respond to the spiritual needs of persons. We charge you to hold in your hearts the needs of the wider community in which we live so that we live out our devotion to the common good in community, nation, and world. Members of the board, you are charged with keeping sight of the big picture, with holding our vision, honoring our past, and guiding us toward our future. Are you ready and willing to accept this charge? We are. Do you, the members and friends of this congregation, affirm these elected leaders as volunteers who need your support, your participation, and your appreciation, as well as your caring and concern? Please say, we do. We do. Grateful for your willingness to take on the responsibilities of leadership in our community, we affirm your calling and vow to support your ministry of leadership in every way that we can. We encourage you to take care of yourselves as you take care of us, and to remember that you are part of this community even while you lead us. In response to this, and as a sign of this affirmation of your call to service, I invite you each to pour a little more water into this bowl as a sign of your commitment to uphold the common good of your congregation, each of your contributions mingling with others to create one strong body. May your service be a blessing to you and to life. And so, as you kind of exit, I invite you to pour a little water into here and then Margaret will lead us. How we give, what we do with our lives, our time, and our resources is a reflection of our values. In response to the abundance we are blessed with, every week this congregation donates generously to organizations in the community whose work aligns with our values and principles. Our community partner agency this month is Shelter House. In the last year, Shelter House provided emergency shelter to 617 adults and 117 children in our community. It has remained open throughout the pandemic, providing temporary housing and helping people find permanent housing. In just the first six months of 2021, with grants and individual gifts for eviction prevention work, Shelter House has been able to keep 555 individuals in 236 households from experiencing homelessness. 
on the screen, you will see instructions for how to give online, or you may take this time to write a check and address an envelope to UUS to be put in the mail. You may assist our community partner, contribute to the congregation to provide additional support for our operating expenses, or contribute towards your pledge to our society. The offering is a sign of commitment to this free congregation, which is completely supported by the voluntary generosity of all who join with us. As we give and receive the offering, may we be transformed by our giving, and may the world be transformed by our gifts. some in pain we can worship this ground we walk on cherishing the beings that we live beside loving spirits will live forever we're all swimming to the other side i'm alone and i am searching hungering for answers in my time i am balanced on the brink of wisdom i'm in to receive a sign I move forward with my senses open imperfection will be my crime in humility I will listen we're all swimming to the other side I live beneath the great big dipper we are washed in the very same rain we are swimming in the stream together some in power some in pain we can worship this ground we walk on cherishing the beings that we live beside loving spirits will live forever we are swimming to the other side on this journey through thoughts and feelings finding intuition my head my heart i am gathering the tools together i'm preparing to do my part all of those who have come before me bound together and be my guide loving lessons that i will follow we're all swimming to the other side when we get there we'll discover all of the gifts we've been given to share have been with us since life's beginning and we never noticed they were there we can balance on the brink of wisdom never recognizing that we've arrived loving spirits will live for together we're all swimming to the other side we are living beneath the great big dipper we are washed in the very same rain we are swimming in the stream together, some in power and some in pain. We can worship this ground we walk on, cherishing the beings that we live beside. Loving spirits will live forever, we're all swimming to the other side. Gratitude and how we understand and express interdependence is part of how we live our Unitarian Universalist faith. May what has been shared today help us more fully affirm our interconnection and live into love and justice. Immediately after the service, we will have interactive outdoor water communion stations set up here at UUS, including on the back patio where I'm setting, I'm watching people set up a water play station. There will be stations that are playful, meditative, musical, including the folks you've heard here today. 
and we'll bring out our bowl of water for you to pour in any water that you may have saved for today or some of our communal water. After the service, we'll also have time for people who are online to join in conversation and community, and the Zoom host will explain that process. And so now, to close our service today, we'll be singing Wade in the Water. Alex. And uh, you're welcome to stand as you like. me have seen Alvin Ailey dance to that will have been dancing in your heads. Wonderful. Please join me in the words for extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. All these we carry in our hearts and in our minds until we are together again. As you go out into the world, may you go in peace, love, and justice, always and ever living love more fully and fiercely into the world. Go in peace. Amen. And blessed, blessed be. And may we use 